but in this video we're going to be using a capacitor so I want to remind you be aware of this whenever you see a video with capacitors or are doing projects with the capacitors because you won't always get the warning but uh, you need to make sure it's discharged before you handle it or put it in the circuit so I only use 9 volts across my capacitor so I wasn't worried about uh, getting shocked so I just picked up the capacitor and set the leads in to uh, one rail of this breadboard to discharge it also this is a low value capacitor only 470 microfarad so I wasn't worried about the high uh, currents and so I wasn't worried about damaging the breadboard if you're dealing with the capacitor that may have a high voltage across it or a lot of stored energy because it's a super capacitor or whatever you don't want to short it out directly you want to use the right value resistor to make sure the current is low enough to keep everything safe so now in this video we're gonna take some measurements of changing voltages within a circuit so this is a really simple circuit it's just protective resistor an LED and a capacitor in series so right now the capacitor is charged and so we'll just discharge it quickly by shorting it out again and now you can see the LED came on because while the capacitor charges it takes current you see the LED get more dim because as the capacitor gets more charged as the voltage across the capacitor increases then the current decreases so now let's measure some voltages so first off we're using a 9 volt battery but it's an older 9 volt battery so to measure the voltage making it to the components which is about the battery voltage we can just measure the rail directly by connecting the two components that plug into both ends of the rail and here you can see the battery is about 8.8 .8 volts in that range so now let's measure the capacitor we charge the capacitor well the LED was lit up and here you can see the capacitor is about 7.4 volts so that's about a volt and a half less than the battery voltage that's because of this LED LEDs are semiconductors they're diodes but it takes a certain amount of voltage before they will conduct and so we can measure the voltage across the diode and you can see right now it's about 1.35 volts uh, the LED won't conduct because that's the voltage across it right now it's too low for it to conduct and with my measurements of these LEDs the uh, voltage that it blocks seems to go way down with low current as you see here about 1.35 there's hardly any flowing through other than the little bit that we're losing uh, due to leakage but uh, at higher currents close to 20 milliamps it seems to block about 2.2 volts I showed that in some uh, recent videos so now we're gonna measure the voltages as they change so to begin with I want to mention this is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor 4700 ohm resistor this slows things down enough for us to watch pretty well what's happening so we're gonna measure the voltage of uh, the capacitor so I have these two jumper wires clipped to uh, that to the uh, multimeter probes so we can take a constant measurement and keep my hands free so they're attached to both sides of the capacitor and then one end of the LED so first let's uh, discharge the capacitor by shorting it out and now you can see we get down to zero volts when I stop shorting it out you see the voltage rises of course the voltage rises uh, quickly at first and slows down until ultimately it will get to its final voltage which was the battery voltage minus the voltage drop of the LED the voltage needed to get the LED to conduct because the voltages are also changing across the LED and now you can see the currents just trickling in because the voltage of the capacitor is close to the voltage of the battery minus the LED voltage drop so there's uh, voltages on both sides kind of fighting each other the higher voltage of course wins it sends current in that direction but uh, still the uh, voltage isn't changing as fast across the capacitor as it charges alright so now I move the wires that are attached to the multimeter to measure the voltage across the LED so I just charged or I uh, discharged I should say the capacitor and it's charging up again and that's why you see the voltage cross uh, dropping across the LED uh, because the capacitors charging a bit but uh, in any case 
we're going to short out the capacitor and uh, while the LED is lit and the capacitor is short out that means the current's flowing through the wire but now that I remove the wire the capacitor is charging and you see the LED is getting more dim as the capacitor gets full but here you can see the voltage isn't really changing across the LED it's holding fairly steady there is some changes it's not blocking as much voltage as less currents flowing through it uh, but still you can see the voltage changes here they do change a little bit in the LED based on the amount of current flowing through it so now to end this video let's look at the voltage across the resistor that's the other main changing voltage and uh, the capacitor is one of the main changing voltages and the resistor is the other one the voltage across the LED tends to hold pretty steady so right now there's about zero volts across the resistor the capacitor is charged so it has when you consider the capacitor plus the voltage drop of the LED there's uh, no current flow so there's no reason for there to be a voltage across the resistor now we'll look at when we short out the capacitor what happens and you'll notice that while it's short out we have about the battery voltage minus the drop of the LED there we go and that's while the wire shorted out the currents flowing through the wire instead of the capacitor but when I remove the wire now the capacitor is charging so there's a voltage building up across the capacitor this side's becoming more positive that side's becoming more negative and again the LED takes out about a volt and a half out of the circuit in that range so as the voltage of the capacitor gets close to the voltage of the battery minus the LED drop then the voltages on both sides of the resistor equal out and that's why we end up with zero volts across the resistor once the capacitor is fully charged